Hi all, let's have a look at another fascinating game from TSEC Season 19, Stockfish NN against Ethereal, as is in the Premier Division Round 34. The opening scenery set, it actually transposes from an English opening into a variation of the Nimzo Indian. And we have the Free Knights variation. So Free Knights are out and about here. So originally named <laughs> the Free Knights. We see C5 and White plays G3 now. Black does inflict structural damage and plays Queen A5. We see Bishop D2, B6, Bishop G2, Bishop B7. So Black has a lock and key at the moment over the E4 square. The Queen seems a little bit misplaced on A5. But this is the end of the book. Stockfish here plays just castling, both sides castle. We see rook e1. This deviates from a high level stem game, which is Richard Report against Nigel Short in 2013. And that game went d5 after queen a6, uh, bishop g5 was played. And it was a very interesting game, which eventually Richard Report won. It was a very, very complicated game. Richard Report eventually won that in 52 moves so anyway here we see rook e1 and now bishop e4 and it seems at the moment well you know isn't rook e1 it's it's a bit of a mysterious uh rook move isn't it and why bishop e4 if bishop e4 wasn't played here as far as i can tell if d6 it seems as though with the queen here actually d5 is quite factual because this bishop can sometimes do damage. For example, like this, the bishop's now threatening c4, hitting the queen, hitting d5, so taking c4. So that justifies um, the bishop actually quite a lot, just winning material. If we look at this again with d6, d5, it seems as though whatever way this is cut, uh, if b5 here, white actually does well with knight h4, going to f5. For example, this situation is also pretty favorable. The pawn is immune on d5. If bishop takes this 97 check, pick out a piece. So interesting situation with the mysterious rook move and bishop e4. It seems as though black's got a, a strong lock on the position at this point. We see a liberating move here. I wonder if you can guess what Stockfish played in this position. What would you play if I give you five seconds to pause the video for 100 points? White to play here. My clue is it's really quite liberating. Okay, Bishop G5. This is interesting to me. Uh, Nimzo Indian, Nimzovich brainchild you know, opening, giving up the double pawns, but also furthermore, as well as this pawn sacrifice, which is represented, it's quite a deep pawn sack, I believe. Black is the one which is going to be inflicted with structural damage. And Nimzovich talked about double pawns, and his favourite blockader for double pawns uh, is, is the knight. It seems almost, I get the impression as though this has been factored in. You know, a blockading knight on f5, once there's double pawns, could be an attractive proposition in the very distant future. So we see a very, very deep, you know, pawn sack. This is taken. Ethereal sees nothing wrong with taking this pawn. Um, it's technically uh, a challenging position anyway. If knight e8, bishop e7, winning the exchange. If bishop g6 is actually knight e5, you know, a8's in trouble. And if d5, then white just plays bishop takes and knight takes and bishop takes. There's some technical issues. So queen takes c3, grabbing a pawn. We see rook c1, queen b2. And now, yes, this inflicting structural damage onto black. And d5, you can already see potentially that if that pawn was on e6 and white could get a knight to f5 somehow, this would be a fantastic Nimzovichian dream. You know, he has these kind of dreamy ideas. They're kind of abstract. But one of them is definitely this idea of the blockading knight, blockading double pawns, especially around the king, because then it's also, you know, king safety issues once there's a knight on f5. Uh, we see knight a6 here, knight h4, so trying to get rid of this defensive light square piece, the light square bishop. And that does come off the board, so knight takes. We see queen e5, I mean taking this pawn runs into rook a1 
for example. So e4, knight c7. So where is the compensation? Is it really this dream that the double pawn somehow can, can have a blockading knight in front of them on f5 at some point? We see knight h4, knight e8, king g2, and now uh, queen d3, white is strengthening the position. And a4, as if creating some sort of positional binds now. Rook b7, rook e3, rook g8. We see h3, queen f4, there's a fret. All of a sudden, if queen takes h4 with the pinned pawn, unpinning with king h1. If black dare play queen takes f2 here, then in fact, rook d2 and the queen is trapped here. There's no flight squares. Queen's actually trapped in that situation. So we have actually queen h6 here. After king h2, we have queen h5, queen c2, knight g7. And the rooks double, we have rook d8. If another example, if a6, then maybe white takes over the d file and uses d7. For example, like this shows that white could actually prove an advantage with very, very good compensation and getting the pawn back. So rook e d3 is responded to with rook d8 for the moment. We see uh, rook f3, knight e8, rook f4, fancy rook maneuvering. What is all this about? a6, knight g2. There is the potential now for rook h4 and combined with e5 this might be dangerous. It looks as though there's a temptation, yeah, it's for a concession, uh, concession building up. Rook db8, knight e3, queen g5, rook g4, queen h6, rook h4, queen g7, rook d3. This other rook is going to do something. d6, rook b3, queen g5, queen d1, queen g7, king g2, queen g6. Some shuffling here if an energetic b5 is an example of what's going on maybe uh, the problem here is queen a4 for example like this the queen's actually very naughty going into the position for example and then rook g4 and if the, the queen can't uh, neglect well the queen is actually kind of trapped anyway it's a disaster so that kind of thing has to be avoided so queen g6 rook g4 queen h6 queen d2 and we see here queen h5, a5, b5. If b takes a5, then as an example, rook takes and then queen takes a5. This situation is also, it's pretty unpleasant for black here. White's getting a big advantage there. And look what a wreck the black pawn structure is there. So b5 is played and we have c takes and now rook takes. Rook takes and now rook takes. If a takes instead, so not trying to concede the c4 square, the problem is this passed pawn over here is pretty dangerous. After queen a2, that hits e6 and means also that this is a pretty tied up position for black. For example, like this, ganging up on f6, black's a bit overloaded here. For example, like this, white's getting a big advantage there. So tricky stuff. We have here now, uh, let's go back in that variation. So rook takes b5 is played. So that gives up the c4 square. And with that, you know, d6 is a big target. It looks like a bad Benoni structure now, this for black, with double pawns over here. So knight c4 is the sort of move you play against this structure if it was a Benoni. We see e5. And finally, you know that dream I mentioned? A blockading knight on f5. It looks as though it could come true in the future because f5 has been severely compromised. King h2, rook b4. We see queen e2, and this not only protects the knight, it also means rook g8 check to win the queen here. And black desperately, uh, desperately gives up the exchange. Rook takes c4. If knight g7, that neglects d6 you know knight takes d6 is a big advantage for white if rook a4 then again here uh well white can actually 
win the queen with rook g8 check and queen takes but even better is first knight takes an improvement and then uh, in fact queen takes a6 is even better with big threats against the king here and against the knight so here for example that's terrible otherwise yeah there's big king safety issues uh, and here by the way if queen h6 so not giving up the exchange there then knight e3 and we see that dream i talked about earlier if knight g7 yeah it looks as though this is this is all pretty bad there's you know things like queen a6 if rook b5 shielding a6 then the dream happens in this variation knight f5 this dreamy knight on f5 the block blockading dream of Nimzovich is realized uh, for example like this and we actually see a practical aspect to it king safety issues are emphasized here for example like this where it's very difficult to defend the king against g5 even if that knight comes off the board there are big threats for example winning the rook or an incoming g5 will be painful for black hair so yeah the dream is realized actually finally in this variation before this exchange stack happens so rook takes c4 extinguishing that knight but white now you know an exchange up really there isn't that much compensation so let's have a look at this conversion effort so the queen uh, the queen's come off at this point for a moment it looks as though the pawns are scary but you know white's got the pawn on c6 of course so the knight has to go passive against that pawn and the king's ready uh, to handle these pawns as well and we see rook c4 now and f4 breaking up the pawn chain a bit so no d takes here otherwise c5 of course and this means actually the rook's a little bit more factual now and after h4 there's the potential of getting this pawn up to h6 with rook g7 so this is another desperate move c4 a lesser evil move if knight e6 then h6 h h5 for h6 and we can see here rook g7 is going to be good because the knight has to handle the pawn uh so you know if knight takes you know c7 queening uh so this scenario is a disaster for black so after h4 c4 you know this is desperate just taking a the, the job's um, not that hard it seems now and in fact here um, black actually resigned here you know white's clearly got dangerous connected past pawns now as well as being the exchange up so uh yeah i thought that was an interesting game from the point of view of the uh, sacrifice of the pawn quite a deep pawn sacrifice in the opening and remembering you know some of the nimzovician conceptual remarks that he made it's like can we sacrifice pawns for some of those conceptual remarks he made a, a blockading knight on f5 i think is the key thing personally that um it never emerged but it was threatening to emerge and it led to black sacrificing the exchange so in one variation it could have emerged that dream but it was extinguished but at some cost so a fascinating game there. there are a lot of fascinatingly uh, deep games being played out of this world games so see tsec-chess.com by the way i've got a new course at udemy king's crusher tv slash opening tango at the moment it's got 4.8 it's got really good review ratings people seem to like it uh there's over 10 hours of video content check that out it's good for learning about weakness provocation in a general sense as well as uh, opening ideas um there's the bitly slash leela chess playlist bitly slash stockfish chess come and join me at the king's crusher tv discord chat forum and also you can challenge me for a game bitly slash chess world if you register at chess world i'll be able to invite you for a game five days a move nice and leisurely and you can use um, opening uh, books in correspondence style chess that is a legal resource by the way if you want to brush up your openings you know feel free to do so okay just don't turn on these monster engines against me you can beat me because i'm only spending like a second or two on every move so um yeah comments questions like shares subscribes uh, with the notification bell really appreciated thanks very much